All right, resume. We're good. All right. I think I might have to redo the camera because it's frozen. Okay. Okay, there we go. I should turn back on. Okay. So right here we're in your cast iron. The cast iron is the material that runs under the foundation to your home. Yeah. Oh, just so you know. I, I appreciate all the information, assuming that I don't know anything, but uh, just I, I'm a mechanical engineer, so um, that maybe that will... Uh, I appreciate you explaining everything, though, as we go. So one thing to keep in mind, um, the bottom left of your monitor, mm -hmm. uh, we want to see a negative number, typically uh, negative 3 to negative 8. Yes. That's ideally where we want the range to be. That's going to indicate that we have good slope. Anytime that we see a yeah. positive, we know that the pipe is going upstream. Right, so. yeah. Um, and so this is close to where the toilet is draining into the... The toilet will drain, is the bathroom right here? Yes, right. Okay, so the, the toilet's going to drain in when we first put the camera in, mm -hmm. it's going to be that fitting right there. Okay, and is there any indication of how what the distance is so far? Is 12 yeah. Feet? Right yeah. now, we're roughly 12 feet out Got it. Okay. into the Thank system. I, I see that. Okay, so most of what we're seeing is like some rust. So this, there is a little bit of buildup inside of it. Yeah. Um, the black kind of slimy material you'll see on the sides and bottom of the pipe, mm -hmm. that's what we call like sludge buildup and grease buildup. Okay. Now, when I say grease buildup, I'm not pertaining to like cooking oils or things like that. Mm -hmm. What happens is cast iron just starts deteriorating on itself, mm. and as it's deteriorating with water sitting on it, this is kind of the material that we're left with. Huh. Okay. Interesting. Lots of cement, huh? Um, yep, we are transitioning outside. So I'll pull back towards the transition so we can get a more accurate mm. assessment. So we got the concrete aggregate right here. Okay. So roughly 18 so feet, we're transitioning from the cast iron and we're going to another material, the mm. concrete, that's going to run outside. Bottom left of the screen right here, mm -hmm. you can see we got a little bit of a crack right here on the yeah. concrete pipe. Sure, okay. That's definitely going to be a concern. We is also there, do have positive grade as well. Is there a way to like um, put in some epoxy through like a, a, a snake <laughs> or? So we do offer uh, an option like that. It's like a, it's called a permaliner. It's where we shoot an epoxy coated sleeve okay. to adhere into the system. Yeah. Um, that's, that, those are some options that I can go in depth with you here in a little bit after I show you where the system's running and everything like that. Okay. Give you a more accurate assessment of what you're actually working with. Yeah. So we are still running steady with positive grade. We're bouncing back and forth. Right here, the concrete structurally, I don't see any root penetration through the joints. Yeah. I don't see any pipe separations or misalignments. Everything right now looks intact. Okay. A little bit of buildup right here. Looks yeah. like some just like concrete that's starting to deteriorate off the side of the pipe, mm -hmm. as well as laying right there that looks like a little piece of toilet tissue. It's kind of stuck yeah. behind. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And so periodically we see like joints in the concrete pipe. 
every, yeah, I'll show you a joint. Uh, typically with concrete, every five to eight feet. So you see this kind of like white and grayish ring in the center of the pipe? Yep. So that's a joint where a male to female end is connected together. Mm -hmm. Be getting close to the city line, I think. It should be coming up on here. Another joint right here. Looks like we have a little tiny root tail right here at the top of the pipe trying to stick through. Yeah. That would be out in the street, so that's kind of strange. I mean, 60 feet is we're we're beyond the property line for this house. We'll definitely locate where the system's running, and we can dial in where your property line ends with the sewer. Yeah. So we're leaving your concrete pipe, and we're transitioning to a clay line, and right here is your city tap. Okay. So your sewer system counting footage from this clean out right here, mm -hmm. uh, you're looking at roughly 70 to 75 feet. Yeah. I would say more so 70, simply because um, my footage counter that you see, it counts from the center of this reel. Yeah. So subtracting that five feet with the distance and the drop, about 70 feet what we can confirm. Yeah. And this this house is 25 feet wide and you're five feet from the this side of it, so there's only 20 feet to the edge of the house over yep. there. Yep, and so that makes sense where I have roughly 18 feet of that cast iron before transitioning to the pipe outside. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any questions as of right now from what I've shown going out to the system? No. Okay. Uh, so, so that was at 75 feet and you're there, so there appears to be some roots up to about 67 feet. This right here, or, I think this guy right here, mm -hmm. it kind of looks like a spider web to me. Oh, okay. I mean, with how light it is, yeah. it necessarily doesn't look like a root. Okay. But this one right here, at 60, 65 almost, at the Maybe top, that's root. definitely a tiny little root just penetrating through the, the system. So the that's 10 feet from the city line, which is probably in the middle of the street. Roughly, yes, sir. So that would be like on the edge of the street. Okay. That's, it seems strange that there would be roots out there in the street, but I guess. I've, I've heard roots. from a number of people like if you were to cut a tree down and lay it lengthwise, mm -hmm. however long it is in length, it, the roots can travel that far underground. Interesting. I and mean, if your neighbors have some large trees, it could be coming from their source. Yeah. I have that oak tree in my front yard that's about maybe 20, uh, 15 or 20 years old. Okay. And I don't see any evidence of roots from that because that would be at about 25 feet, maybe 25 to 30 feet. Okay. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, 30 to 35 feet, probably. Okay. switch back into the cast iron right here at this curve. Yeah. My biggest concern from what I've seen, aside from that little tiny retail, is this crack right here in this concrete. Yeah, and so that concrete's probably 60 years old. It's going to be original from when your home was built. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, um, we don't know how recent that crack is. Um, so, do you have, like, an idea of 
I mean, is it good for 10 years, for five years? That you really can't put a time stamp on, mm -hmm. um, because I mean, it is an etched engraved crack, so I mean, at any point in time, if water sits there, um, I mean, it, it could break away, and it, it could lead to a collapsed pipe, because you can see after the little triangle wedge right here, it's mm -hmm. starting to crack and go further down. Yeah. So that can lead into like a domino effect of causing multiple cracks in the system. Okay. Um, that's so, my biggest concern. Back to the epoxy, what you said. Yeah. What we would do, we would locate where this piece is to be exact outside. We're going to be right outside the front, I can almost guarantee you. Mm -hmm. um, and then we install what are called two-way cleanouts. Um, they're required by code. So it's, uh, it's sections of pipe. We do a 10-foot repair. And it's sections of a four inch pipe that come flush to your grass. That way it's access point. So if Jose ever needs to service the system in the future, we don't need to go through this clean out right here. We just open up the ones in the yard and go from there. Mm -hmm. But uh, back to the epoxy, once we install those clean outs, we use our epoxy lining machine and we go through those clean outs and it shoots an epoxy coated pipe in place of the concrete pipe. That way you don't have to worry about any cracks or root penetration in, in the future. And uh, how, what's the distance in the pipe that is included, that's covered by that epoxy liner? Wait, there, so how that would work, we would do a 10 foot partial repair on your property, mm -hmm. and we'd grab a measurement of how much pipe is left after the repair that we've done to your city connection, and we would line that, that amount. So all the way from uh, inside of this crack all the way out to the city line? That's that's the, the highly recommended route to go mm -hmm. because you're not going to have to worry about the issue in the future. Yeah. If you want, you can just do the partial repair right there at the crack to get rid of the crack, and then you can have Jose do maintenance on the system in the future. If, if in case that route ever becomes more of a threat, uh, you can have Jose cut it out annually, that's yeah. another route to recommend. Okay. So you can do a partial, you can kind of go the full route. Um, another thing what you can do as well, you can also start with what's called hydro jetting, uh, where you use high pressurized water to try and remove some of that buildup that's surrounding the crack, yeah. leave the pipe nice and clean, and then also that route on the top, we can just go ahead and cut that out for you. Yeah, so, Jose talked a little about that yeah. before, so thanks. Hey Kevin. Hey, how's it going? Oh, uh, we're just scoping everything out. So oh, okay. So, uh, right at the edge of the foundation where it transitions from the steel pipe to uh, concrete pipe, uh, the concrete has a crack that I'll need to oh, really? do something about. Yeah, it's, it's nothing severe right now, but it could become a major issue sometime in the future. So primarily the problem was the wipes, huh? There was no other clog that we could okay. detect. So Yeah, I, I asked Alicia while she was awake just a little yes. bit ago, and yeah. I, I was like, you, you said they found wipes, you didn't give him any wipes, and she was like, yeah, she's like, 